Senator Roberts. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for appearing today. I want to reference the Snowy Montan Rivers Increased Flow Safety Management Plan 2022-2027. The plan calls for increased flows into the upper Murrumbidgee in a series of high flow releases from Tantangarra Dam. On page 37, in fact, uh, it's headed key issues, considerations. The very first one refers to an increase to 40,755 40, megalitres to be released into snowy Montan rivers from Tantangarra Reservoir. This is an increase in the 2022-23 water year from 35,800 megalitres. Is that correct? Uh, Senator, I don't have that document in front of me, but we, we can take it on notice to look at that. But I guess in terms of recent conditions over the last couple of years, I wouldn't be surprised if there'd been an increase from um, year 21, 22 to 22, 23, but yeah, we, I'd need to take it on notice. That seems to be to um, repair or restore the Murrumbidgee, and I'm not, I'm not arguing that case. Um, Tantangarra Reservoir. Roberts, um, excuse me, Chair. Senator Roberts, um, I think you've heard the official say she doesn't have the, do the document in front of no, her. No, I'll take it on notice. That's oh, fine. good. If you did want to ask further questions about that, it's presumably we can find it. It's just yeah. providing the reference would assist us to do so. The New South Wales Government, Snowy Montana. You can have this if you like. Maybe take Terrific. <laughs> Tantangarra storage holds 250 gigalitres. However, Tantangarra Reservoir has never been more than 70% full in the 23 years to December 2020. This means there has never been water available to generate 350 gigawatt hours of electrical energy. In addition, the long-term average weekly volume of the Tantangarra Reservoir in the same 23 years is 18.15 per cent, which allows only 32 gigalitres to be used for generation. The long-term average storage available in Talbingo is found to be approximately 33 gigalitres. These new high surge flows, plus the existing daily water inflow into the upper Murrumbidgee, will account for 100 per cent of the water storage in Tantangarra based on the last 23 years of inflows. There's no water in Tantangarra for Snowy 2. Is this correct? No, Senator, I think in fairness to you that the questions that you're asking are really about the business of Snowy Hydro Limited and I suspect they'll be able to give you a high quality answer to your question. So I, if you're okay, I will take that on notice for them to come back on notice and, and respond. I'd like to you to that. answer it. I can't answer it, so I'll take it on notice. Senator Roberts, I think in directing your questions, the officials from the department will answer what they can, but if the questions are about the operation of Snowy, they need to go to Snowy. I understand the department can, I can, can help you in terms of the interface <laughs> they have. There. I understand that, Chair, very clearly. To be uh, fair, I was at the Snowy hearing and Senator Roberts did ask these questions of Snowy and Snowy were a bit ambivalent and suggested that he asked the department. So, Well, I think maybe put them on notice to both I, 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 sets and then we'll, um, we'll deal with the response in terms of whether it covers your questions through the committee. And I also want to know, because um, Snowy Hydro too said there's plenty of water in Tantangarra. Clearly there's not. I'll take that on notice, Senator. Thank you, Hydro. thank you, Mr. Frederick. Sorry. I'll take that on notice for Snowy Hydro. I'd like you to answer the question about the availability of water. I'll this is it. crucial. It's fair enough. I'll take it on notice. Thank you. The water in Tantangarra cannot be used for hydro via the existing connection to Lake Eucumbine, which flows into the Murray, or the new Snowy Mountain Snowy Two connection, which flows into the Tumut, then the Lower Murrumbidgee. <laughs> This means that all the water Snowy 2 will have to be pumped up from Talbinko before coming down. That's, n that's not a problem. We understand that because pumped hydro, you either start with the water at the bottom, you start with the water on the top, and you, you, you end up in the same place. My critical question is about the availability of water. But the second question, Snowy 2 is making one third of its revenue from selling insurance policies to underwrite the con lack of continuity of supply of unreliable wind and solar as generators. The basic idea is 
that if an unreliable renewable project like solar and wind can't supply its contractor power, then Snowy will let the waters flow down the hill and generate power for them. One third of Snowy 2's uh, revenue comes from insurance, we were told. So that suggests the water must be available in Tantangara year round to provide that for the immediate electricity dispatch. We're talking about critical, thank you, um, peak hour generation. My question is, the water in Tantangara is fully allocated, so water will have to be pumped up the hill and stored against future needs under these insurance contracts. Some of that will be lost in seepage and evaporation, quite a lot. How has that been dealt with in Snowy Hydro's water licence? Does Snowy Hydro have a water licence? So, Senator, I'll need to take that on notice, and in deference to you, I'll take it on notice for Snowy and for the department as well. Yeah, I'd like an answer from, from your department in particular. We can get it from Snowy. Um, do they have water agreements? On notice. Thank you. And do the water, if they do have any water agreements, is it sufficient? Are, are they sufficient to match the insurance policy that Snowy Hydro is going to be getting one third of its revenue from? Yep, on notice for both. Is Snowy Hydro on us? Thank you, because this deals with water in the high mountains. So thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>